Hello, my name is Jessica, and I just wanted to share my story of how blessed I am and how amazing God has been in my life. Um, so, here I go. Um, I was recently diagno- diagnosed with stage 4 synovial sarcoma, which is a rare form of cancer. Um, and it accounts for 14,000 new cases a year in, in the United States and um, accounts for 1% of all cancers. Um, it also accounts for 4,500 deaths um, per year. So, that's the type of cancer I have. Um, so let me start from the beginning. In January of 2012, my dad had recently what passed away from colon cancer, and I went into a severe depression where I was unable to even return back to work. I was barely functioning. Um, I majority of my day I was spent it sitting in my living room in the dark when the kids would go off to school, just crying and journaling and thinking, how could this have happened? Why did it happen? Why did it have to happen to my dad? And just really bad. Where when I would even go out to my sister's house, I couldn't even last without crying. Um, And my sister finally said, you know, I pray that you get some relief or comfort from daddy. I hope that he comes to you in a dream and I hope that you know that he's okay, you know, and, you know, and I just said, okay, you know, whatever, um, and just really battled with, um, I, December the 8th, the day before my dad's birthday of 2012, the same year, um, my dad finally came to me in a dream, and it was Christmas time, and my grandmother and my older sister were in the kitchen cooking, my younger sister was setting the table, my dad was decorating the tree, and I was coming down the stairs, and it was as if no one knew that he was gone, everybody was acting like everything was normal, and I was the only one that knew that my dad had passed away, and here he is. So I ran down the stairs, and I was hugging him and squeezing him so tight, and he was hugging me, and he looked at me kind of like smiling, like, what is wrong with you, girl? I'm okay. Like, what is wrong with you? I'm okay. Like, why are you hugging me so tight? And I woke up immediately. It was like that quick, and I woke up so mad and angry. You know, I called my grandmother, which was my, uh, which is my dad's mom, and and I told her about the dream, and I told her how mad I was, and I was crying, and I was like, I didn't get a chance to tell dad anything, and I didn't get, and she kind of said, the dream wasn't meant for you to say anything. Your dad knows that you love him and you mess up. It was meant for him to tell you that he's okay, that he's in a better place and he's okay. It was for him to tell you. And, you know, I got the phone and I was just like, okay, whatever, you know, she didn't get it. You know, she doesn't understand what I'm saying. So, you know, two days later, um, I had this excruciating pain in my upper right side. And it was so bad that, you know, my husband was kind of like, you need to go to the emergency room. And he never says that because he never wants to sit. And he knows how long it takes to sit in the emergency room. And he kind of was like, you need to go. So I finally gave in, and I said, okay, let's go. So I dropped the kids at my sister's house, and we went. Um, I went in thinking, I don't know what I thought it was, but they did a CAT scan thinking it probably was appendicitis, and it came back that there was this large mass and tumors spread across my abdomen wall and that I needed to get admitted immediately. So I was admitted. Um, me and my husband just cried because we're like, what is going to happen? Is it cancer? What is it? Um, so after a week long stay there, um, they did a biopsy, but the results, you know, we had to wait for the results to find out if it was in fact cancer. Um, so a week later I received a phone call and my mom had just so happened came over to see me just to check on me while I got the call and it was cancer and I hung with the phone and I started crying I told my mom I said it is cancer my mom just screamed and she cried
cried and she just said, you know, she's just like, oh my God. And we all were crying. My, I called my sisters and they, everybody immediately came over and we we're all crying. And just because we went, just went through it with my dad, this, just the same year. And we didn't know if our family could handle it. And we didn't know how bad it was and just the unknown. Um, so I went to see, had my first visit with my local oncologist, who I absolutely feel is heaven sent, Dr. Mitchell Machado. And from the first visit, he always was like, you know, you're going to live like you're healthy, you're strong, you're young, you have so many things going for you. And I feel like you're going to beat this. So he hadn't himself treated a person with sarcoma. So he referred me to someone um, at you know, at the University of Virginia that had a, just more experience than he did. So that's about I went about it. That's about two hours away. So I went there, and that first visit was just so draining because you know that was the first time we were able to ask all these questions. Um, and I asked, "Have you ever seen a person with?" this have you ever how long do they live what type of treatment what type you know all these questions and he had only seen five patients with sarcoma and four of them had already passed away and one was living had just um, made it to their seven month mark so I came home just crying crying and crying thinking for about a week day and night I can't leave my kids. I can't leave my kids. I can't leave my kids. My twin girls are nine. My son is 12. My daughter's 13. I can't leave my kids in a year. How unfair is that? I cannot leave my kids in a year. And I can say after a week long cry fest, um, I kind of came to my senses and said, okay, you have to fight this. And you're going to have to get out of that mode to fight this. So I started researching because my senses came like, hey, you've only seen five patients. That's not an expert. I need to go somewhere where there is a person who has seen hundreds of this. So I um, found Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in, in New York. Um, and they because they had a sarcoma center there, a sarcoma department, and who they specialize in. They see this all the time and have seen hundreds of them. So I um, went there, had my first visit, and left there very optimistic, left there feeling ecstatic. Um, Dr. Tapp was, gave me great advice and kind of gave me a pep talk, kind of said, um, this year is going to probably be the roughest year for you, but you have to focus on you. Not being a mom, not being a wife, not being a friend, not being a sister. You have to focus on you. Which is kind of hard because as a mom, you your intuition is to nurture, is to go to those field days and award ceremonies and field trips and all these things. And that was kind of rough. So um, I came home. I started chemo. And my church backed me 100%, Colonial Heights Baptist Church, which I feel like is the greatest church in the world. Um, my pastors in my church anointed me with oils. There was this prayer line going. Uh, my family was praying for me. Friends were praying for me. And I just felt like I had a chance. At that moment, I had to kind of wake up and say, you know, I'm going to live. I have so much in that this must, there must be a purpose for this. Like, God has to have a purpose for this. Um, did my first cycle of chemo, which I had to stay four days in the hospital inpatient because I had to have a three, a 24 hour, three day chemo pump pumping into me. So it was kind of pretty intense. Um, made it through the first cycle. Um, didn't have any nausea, vomiting. Um, I had a little bit of a sore throat and um, I started to lose my hair, but that was about it. So I kind of was like, okay, I can do this. 
you know, if it's like this, I can, I can make it. I can fight this. I can get through this. After the second cycle, um, same thing. You know, just a little bit of sore throat. And it only lasted maybe a few days. And, you know, and by the second cycle, I didn't want to keep because every time I would, like, rub my hair, hair came out. So by then, I was like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and shave it off because that felt like I had some sort of control over it. So I went in and shaved my head and um, felt good. Um, started praying, started praising God because I had, I realized like, oh my goodness, you know, how amazing is this? I have, I'm taking this intense aim chemotherapy and I'm making it. I'm okay. Um, I had my first CAT scan after the two cycles and it showed that my tumors were shrinking. So it, it was working. Then I had two more and it showed that it was reduced to specks on the screen that it had literally like shrunk into like little specks on the screen and there was no new growth so I just started just testifying and giving my testimony and praising God on you know what it didn't look good a few months ago and you know and right now I'm doing okay I'm eating I'm living I haven't lost any weight, um, and I'm doing a lot better. My tumors are shrinking, you know. So I met with the um, surgeon, Dr. Singer at um, UVA, I mean, at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and Dr. Tapp at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and they both were just very optimistic, and, you know, Dr. Singer was like, I don't really think that you're going to need surgery, and Dr. Tapp kind of was like, I think this is the best case scenario besides not, you know, besides being cured from this. Um, you know, so I know that there is a purpose. I know that hindsight right now, I know that that dream when my dad came to me was he knew that I was going to have to go through this tough fight and I couldn't go through it in the state that I was in and that severe depression and clinging on to my dad and the memory of my dad, um, So I know that everything was meant to be. And I know that, you know, my church family, who's been there this whole time from day one, who's been praying for me, bringing me meals, um, my family that's been praying for me, my friends that's been praying for me, people that I don't even know that's been praying for me. And I know that that's the reason I'm here. When I read stories of people who are having to do chemo, you know, a year or two years of chemo or people that had to come in their limbs that have been amputated. I know that God's been there with me and that I know that spreading this and letting people know that even when you're at the end of your rope and you feel that there is no more, that you can't give anymore, that you can't take anymore, that you have to have faith, you have to be strong, and you have to know that with faith all things are possible, and with God all things are possible, because at this point, I know that I'm going to survive, and I know that I'm here to share the miracles that God's been doing, I know that when I go to the oncologist, and they're smiling, and they look at me, you know, and they know that things are good for me right now. Um, It's just a good feeling. It's just very surreal to know that just barely six months ago, I was knocking at death's door. So I thought, but God had other plans and that I'm here now and I'm driving and I'm going places and that feels good. I've even had um, at Tricky Sports Association, my kids' football league has been praying for me. Um, It's just been amazing, you know. So I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm continually continually fighting this. And I just finished my fifth cycle chemotherapy um, about three and a half weeks ago. So right now I'm just waiting to hear back on what's the next step. But 
it's just in a different light where I'm not looking at the gloom. Right now, I'm just, I know that I'm at peace and I know that God's with me. So that's my story and that's it. So please share this with others and hopefully it will inspire you or anyone else to know that God is amazing. So, bye.